another one of my videos if you don't know me my name is Beverly and for those that are returning thank you guys so much for joining me today in today's video as you guys could have seen by the title we are going to be talking about sublimation now when we talk about sublimation I'm not just going to talk about the process and how it's done and what all you can sublimate on because I'm pretty sure if you guys have seen any of my past videos you guys know that I've talked lots about it in the past but today we're going to be talking about specifically on what programs that I like to print from how to change your color settings, and how to resize. Those are the most important questions that I get asked as a sublimation beginner whenever you're starting in this industry. I get lots of newbies come to my channel, come into my DMs, asking me, Beverly, what program do I print from, okay? So today we're gonna be talking a little bit about two of my favorite programs to print from and how it's done, both on Mac and Windows. So if you guys wanna see how I do it, stay tuned. Now, before we do get started, I want to talk a little bit more about this because it's a very, very common issue when you're starting off sublimation in general. Even I had the issue whenever I was starting. I didn't know where to print from. I thought I can just print from my Cricut Design Space software or, you know, just straight off my computer. And as far as I'm concerned, you really can but you have limitations. So when it comes down to Cricut Design Space, as you guys already know, the program has had updates here and there, but we all know that Cricut Design Space still limits you for their print and cut size. Yes, you guys heard that right. Now, I can't remember off the top of my head right now what the current print and cut size is for Cricut Design Space users, but I'm gonna leave it somewhere right here on the screen so you guys can see. I'm pretty sure just depending on the size paper that you're going to be printing, either if that's 8.5 by 11 or if it's 8.5 by 14 or anything bigger than that like 11 by 17 paper, I'm pretty sure that the size dimensions for printing cut will vary based off of that, but you are still limited. And what I mean by limited is that you're still going to have like this small border around where your registration marks are at and it's not going to allow you to print completely full size. So even if you have a design that's let's say 8.2 inches wide and you know that you can print because your paper is eight and a half, you're still not going to be able to because you're still going to be limited based off of Cricut's dimensions, okay? So that is one program that I think eh, it's not for me. The second most common way that people think that they're able to print easily is straight from their computer. Now, as far as I know, you definitely can print straight off your computer, but let's talk about the issues that you can come across from just printing straight from your computer and not actually printing through a software where you're able to eventually pull up your additional settings, okay? Now, first one is Windows or PC computers, whatever you wanna call them. So that's a commonly issue whenever you go ahead and have an image, you can't really resize on your computer like straight from it unless you're using like Word document or you're using some other type of program that you're putting it through so then you can see the size of your image and then size it accordingly to what you want. So that's the second most common issue. It's really not a way for you to go ahead and resize from the preview screen. You most likely need to have a software like I mentioned. Now you can definitely just mirror it, you can just flip it horizontally and that works just perfectly. And then from there you can go to file print and then you know you might get that little box where your settings are at and then it shows your printer and then properties that most likely can come up and you can easily print from there but sometimes even then you don't get all of your print settings as you do whenever you're printing from like a software again now for max it's the same issue you have your preview screen you can pretty much just like crop your image down a little bit and then you can go to file print but from there it's almost the same thing that you come across. You might be able to come across all of your print settings, but then who's gonna guarantee that your image is gonna come out the right size? So that's another downside to it. Now, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about Canva because Canva is one program that I truly love to design all of my social media banners, my social media posts, stories, and all of that stuff as far as advertising goes and designing some minimal designs on Canva. Now, Canva is another one that I know people use a lot to design and they're like thinking, okay, well, if I design on there and I save my image as a PNG or as a PDF or whatever you want to print it as, you know, you can definitely save it. 
But what issue are you going to come across the same thing? Whenever you go to hit file, download, and save it, it's going to be saved to your computer. And then you're going to come across the second most common issue, again, where you're either not going to be able to change your color settings for your sublimation prints, or you're not going to be able to resize that image. And even if you save it as a certain size on Canva, let me tell you that most of the time, whenever you're going to take it to your computer, it's going to come out a different size. It's a common issue that happens all of the time. I see it all the time. I hear it all the time in my DMs. And now, without further ado, let's go ahead and show you guys the correct ways or actually these two softwares that I love, love, love to use when it comes down to either having a Mac or a Windows computer or laptop. It is now Adobe Illustrator. Adobe Illustrator is my favorite program to print from. Yes, it does cost you either monthly or you can pay by the year, but let me tell you, it is 100% an investment that you do as a designer or as a small business. It's really so, so worth it because not only can you print and change your color settings and also resize your images from, but you can also do a lot more in Adobe Illustrator as far as making SVGs, as far as designing digital files, or just pretty much doing anything else that's way more advanced in that program. So if you want to take that program into consideration, if you're going to be using it for all those other things, I would definitely recommend Adobe Illustrator in general. Now, the second program that I'm going to mention to you guys is completely free. It's actually a cutting machine software program, and that is the Silhouette Studio Basic Free Edition. Yeah, you guys heard that right. It is Silhouette Studio. It's compatible with all of your Silhouette, either Cameo or Portrait machines. But the good side about having this program is that you definitely don't need to have a cutting machine and it is completely free if you're just getting the basic entry level version, okay? Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about that program really quick. That program is awesome because like I said, you don't need to have a cutting machine and you can download it straight from Silhouette Studio of America, which I'll leave that link down below for you guys to check it out if you guys want to download it. That program is awesome because all you do is download, you enter your images and stuff, and you just go ahead and print. Okay, so I think I'm done talking for now. Let's go ahead and get into the video tutorial showing you guys how to use both programs. Going in with my Windows computer, I'm going to look up Silhouette of America on Google. This part is going to be a little fast because I'm showing you how to get the software. Then you go to software, download, and you can see the system requirements. You need to make sure your computer or laptop is compatible and it has enough gigabytes of RAM. If not, it will crash on you if you try to open it in the future. Okay, now once you have downloaded, you want to open it up. Choose your machine. I have Cameo 3, but you can select none if you don't have one. Cutting mat, again, you can select it or hit none. Media size is going to be the size of your paper that you're currently using for sublimation. And then you want to turn off your registration marks because you're not actually printing on cutting something. Then to bring in an image, you want to do the file merge. Then you bring it in. You can resize by pulling on those corners. And then just make sure you don't exceed those print borders because if not, your image will be cut off. Then you want to go to file print. You'll see your print preview screen of how it's going to look like. And then select your sublimation printer of choice and go to preferences. You want to select your paper size one more time, which is eight and a half by 11 for me. Premium presentation paper mat for type. Quality high, more options, custom advanced, Adobe RGB. For my color mode, I leave everything under 2.2 gamma. I turn on the mirror and I turn off bi-directional printing to slow down my printer. And then you can obviously save your settings as a preset if you need to for future jobs. And then don't forget to select where your paper is coming from, from the cassette or the tray. Now, once it's actually going to go ahead and print, you just leave it at that. I wanted to show another example on how you can actually resize by clicking on those edges. You can actually drag in or drag out from the corners. You can see that the measurements width and height is up top on Silhouette Studio. And if you wanted to add a name and you were wanting to manually mirror your image, you can actually select the image or the text and then hit flip horizontally. That will mirror it automatically instead of doing it through the computer or printer settings. Now for our Mac, we're going into Adobe Illustrator. We're going to go to new file. Then you're going to select the size paper that you're going to work with. I'm doing eight and a half by 11 in inches, CMYK color mode and 300 pixels per inch high quality. Once you want to go ahead and bring in an image, you're going to go to file place, bring in your image, drag and drop it, just stretch it out. And you can see there's my image ready to go. I'm just going to type out bulldogs just to kind of get you a little gist of 
the same kind of concept we did before on Silhouette Studio. And you can mirror this manually if you need to by going to Transform Reflect. That's going to kind of like horizontally move it over. That way you can mirror it manually, but there's no need to do that. You can also see that under Properties on the side, you can resize your image as one whole and you can see what the dimensions are there. Now I'm going into File, Print, and then you're going to select your printer of choice, Page Setup, continue and select the printer that you want to use which mine's the epson 15000 printer and your paper size and then hit ok go to setup continue and then this is where we're going to change our settings you can see i already have a preset saved but we're going to go to print settings and then go to paper cassette premium presentation paper mat best quality mirror image ok and then we're going to go to color options i went to advanced adobe rgb 2.2 gamma leave everything else at zero you can save it as a current preset but you can see i already did and and then we're going to go ahead and change the number of copies if you want to and then hit print. Okay, amigas and amigos, now that you guys saw the video tutorial of me using both programs to print my sublimation designs from, what do you guys think? Please, in the comments down below, let me know what you guys think and also what program you're going to gear towards next for your sublimation printing. Is that going to be Adobe Illustrator or is that going to be Silhouette Studio? Let me know and also let me know why you're choosing to go with that program. Is it because it's free or because it's easier to use and it's not as complex? Let me know all of your thoughts down below. And I also wanted to go ahead and let you guys know that yes, if you guys notice a the difference, there is a name change to my channel. It is now Bev's Crafty Studio. It's no longer a Beverly Garcia as just my name or my business name as it was before. Formerly Invites by Bev's and More LLC. It has now officially changed. I just decided with the new year that just started, why not do this name brand change and logo change and everything just to be matching all of my social media so because we are in my crafty studio and i love this place so much i decided to go ahead and change everything so if you also notice that leave me a little pink heart down below so that's it don't forget to like comment and subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you like this video and i will see you guys next time bye amigas and amigos